And Tesh, talking about technology, what are the tools of technology that you envisage will be driving the future of leadership? I think communication tools. Um, so, so the way information is shared, if you look historically and if you look at those, you know, those antique neoclassical models of, of economics, markets work best when information, all agents have access to information. Mm. And you know, some of the inequalities that we see are when certain agents monopolize information, use information in destructive ways. Mm. Um, I, I mean, we see this with Trump and, and, and uh, you know, fake news and mm. the way you can just use information and the power of its distribution to drive some really destructive behaviors. Mm. And the, the, the more, so, so the, the tragedy here is that the spread of information, if not used responsibly, can have the opposite effect. Mm. But if leaders here learn how to use it responsibly and to communicate in a way that is inclusive, because remember, these communication channels allow you to educate someone mm. who is you know, living behind a rock in the middle of nowhere. And so it has the power to be embracing and pull people into a digital community and I think it can, if it's used for good, is a very, very powerful um, te technological tool for leadership. Because at the end of the day, we're still human beings and we listen to the human word and we're influenced by language and ideas and mm -hmm. sense of belonging. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, that is the, the, that's probably a very powerful one. I mean, you know, it depends. You could go into specific sectors and we could look at the power of nanotechnology or graphite in, you know, water filtration. I see they've now been able to filter desalinate water with graphite sheets. You know, that is going to have a massive impact on, 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 uh, on communities and countries around the world. So uh, there are too many to mention. But if you're asking me to say from a leadership perspective, communication platforms, and the technologies around that, I think, are quite powerful. Now, when you speak to aspiring leaders, what do you tell them about social media? And specifically, how they should use social media to build their own brand and, and, and seek opportunities? And what social media platforms you would recommend for a youth today? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, so my, my kids are youth, so they're 17 mm. and 15 year old. And I'm actually going to say for youth that you should be so careful of the social media platforms you use. I am seeing that social media platforms like Instagram and Snapchat are incredibly destructive to the identity and realism of a young person. That there is a fake world created by people who make money off the platform, you know, the kids don't realize that their pop icon, you know, is actually selling a lip gloss mm -hmm. uh, or a pair of jeans in mm -hmm. that very photoshopped image. Mm -hmm. They have a sense that this is how people look. Mm -hmm. And so it has, and of course, you know, uh, the media and fashion uh, perpetuate particular stereotypes around what that looks like. And it, it can deepen and marginalize young individuals at a very impressionable age where they never feel that they are good enough in reaching these you know, sort of mm. fake worlds um, that they're able to click mm. into. Um, there's also the sense of enjoyment of a moment. Mm. You know, if we, if we talk about mindfulness or gratitudes or, you know, the techniques are always to stop and breathe in, where am I now? And take in a full appreciation of the moment and to live in moments. And what social media can perpetuate, you know, the unhealthy mm. platforms that, that young people seem to flock towards is, is always an aspiration of being someone else and somewhere else. Mm. So there's, there's, for me, uh, you know, in watching my young daughters um, interact and give away power as a woman mm. to this physical image is, is, is very troubling and disturbing. Mm. Um, 
where I think social media is wonderful is a platform like Twitter for me, mm. where I am able to very quickly scan and read material in areas of huge interest. Mm. You know, I can follow The Economist, I can follow scientific journals, um, I can follow deep thinkers, I can follow philosophers that every now and again put out a little tweet that just centers you. Mm. So, I, I, you know, it, it, the social media platform is, is about what is the content you're following. Mm. Because you can be on Twitter and follow some incredibly destructive personalities mm. who use the platform to sort of spew their, their, their poison into mm. the world. And it gives people like that a platform who might not otherwise have had it. They would have, you know, sort of been marginalized by the people around them who say, this is a very unpleasant person. I, I you know, I'm not going to meet with him again. Whereas on social media platforms, you know, they're, they're open and they can connect with other people with, with some of the sort of destructive personalities. So it depends who you, I don't know, it's the platform. I think it's what you choose to follow. And, um, and, and what you spread, the messages you spread on that platform. And if you are spreading messages around how to do things better, if you're spreading messages around um, what I learned, mm. um, uh, new technologies, and maybe sometimes the philosophical, not corny, you know, mm. cheesy things, but just the little philosophical uh, nuggets that help someone to just stop mm. in the middle of their crazy day and take stock. I think then it can be a beautiful platform that enhances your ability to learn a lot faster and assimilate a lot more information quickly, which makes us more useful, I think, as human beings. So, yeah, so I, I, don't, I don't think there's a straightforward um, answer here. It really, it's, it's the economist answer, it depends.